Oh, it's so hot. Um, I don't want to really reading vlog. I'm not wearing my glasses yet. Sorry, just that. <laughs> Glossless face, love it. Um, so I don't think I really explained probably my last vlog because it was kind of all over the place. But I decided to do the thousand dollars readers on like low stakes, so I'm still going on that, even though technically it was like the first week, but it was very flexible, like you could do it the first week or you could take your time. Um, I'm taking my time. So I'm still working on that. Um, yeah, making progress. I did. Yesterday was the Monday. It's not Tuesday morning. Yesterday I did um what did I do? I'm still so sleepy. I still might sleep. <laughs> but I thought I'd better start this vlog. Um she, uh, Monday I did read a whole audiobook that doesn't really go towards any readers on I actually I DNF'd an audiobook and I read a whole other one. I DNF'd the language of Grace by Heather Fawcett. I don't know if it was the narrator or the plot itself, but it just kind of was a bit all over the place for me. I was struggling to get invested. I didn't really understand where the plot was trying to go. And I didn't really enjoy the audiobook narration. So I DNF'd that at about fifty pages in. Um Eh, I don't have much to comment on it because it was just not working for me, so I gave up on it. I didn't want to waste my time on it. Um, and then I listened to The Griffin Gate by Vashti Hardy and finished it. It was really good. I gave it four stars. This is definitely an early reader's middle grade, um, but it was a fun, like, magical kind of mystery element, and it was really sweet and cute. So I loved it. I gave it four stars. It was a really good audiobook too. Like the narration was done really well. Um, I didn't finish my whole section of the Tyrant Bear comma, but I a half way. I did finish um, Artemis Fountain, the Eternity Code though, which I kind of focused on at the detriment of my section of Tyrant Bear comma, um, which was for like every read of them. Uh, accounts for clear your shit as um I can't even remember what the prompt is anymore. Maybe the oldest book in your TPR. Um, accounts for thousand dollars. It was my prompt for Marvel. It also counts for Believethon, obviously. I can't remember what Believethon prompt is going for, but um yes, that's um, I finished that. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I think I appreciated it more than when I read it last time, which was probably not the first time, but, um, I, it has a strong heist element, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so now, middle grade-wise, I'm moving on, like, physical reads, I'm moving on to the colder game. I don't think I'll finish it today, because I think I want to try and catch up on Tyrant Barry Comer, but... Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I want to try and get a good chunk into that. Also, I'm going to start listening to There's Nothing to See Yeti by Stephen Butler and Stephen something else. Um, which is another early readers. Um, it looks cute and fun. I've read the first one. It's the sequel to the Nothing to See Here Hotel. This one's You Ain't Seen Nothing Yeti. Yeah. I just read the first one last believe it on and enjoyed it, so I'm excited to continue. And I think it could easily get finished today. It's only three hours. So we'll probably finish it today. Hi, it's Wednesday morning. Um yesterday was kind of a total write-off. It was so hot, my brain wasn't functioning. Um, like I did hardly any work. Uh, and did hardly any anything. I did a lot of sitting around under the air conditioner because I was dying. Um, it's been our first, like, inappropriately hot day of spring, um, that came out of nowhere. Uh, so, yeah, my body's not used to the heat. But anyway, I did finish Monday's section of Barracomera yesterday. I know it was Tuesday. We haven't even started Tuesday's section yet, but that's fine. Um, I got a little bit into You Ain't Seen Nothing Yeti while I was doing some cleaning. Um... So I did like do dishes. 
um, and cook some dinner, obviously. You gotta eat. Um, I'm gonna try and finish. You won't see nothing yet today while I do work. I've also, I'm now, after some reading this morning, 50 pages into the colder game. This is what the cover looks like, by the way, like the under the dust jacket. Very fancy. Um, and I'm hoping to get at least halfway through this tonight before I jump back into Baru Homerant, because, like, for the clear shit readathon, I kind of made this. This one's counting for the clear shit readathon and Thousand Doors. And I kind of made a, like, it's not a rule of the readathon, but I kind of enforced on myself that I would try and read my clear shit prompts in order. It's kind of, the, the readathon's set up to do that, but it's not a strict rule. Um, so I need to finish this and also one other book, which is this one, before um, I finish Tiny Barrow Comrade. So um, I'm going to try and prioritize getting halfway through this today, and then I'll finish it tomorrow. Um, so I might only get through like Tuesday section of Tiny Barrow Comrade by the end of tomorrow, but I'll go the weekend to catch up. It's fine. Um, and then try and finish this. I read this over Friday and Saturday and then yeah finish Barrett Comrade. Um that's the kind of plan. <sighs> yeah, that's that's where we're at. Um yeah, so I'm gonna work on that today. I'm gonna edit my video now. I'd imported my footage yesterday with the plan to edit it. And you know, just like it was too hot. Um so I like did nothing. Um so I'm gonna edit that now and get that going. Um, and then do a lot of work. And we're gonna make lasagna tonight, which means like effort. <laughs> but, um, it'll be fun. And yeah, so we have plans. We're gonna get stuff done. And we'll just keep plodding along. Keep plodding along. Yeah, I'm hoping to read a lot today. Um, between audiobooking and physical reading. So, yeah. I'll try and actually remember to update you today. I entirely forgot to say that last night, reading Time of Barakoma, I was having a little bit of time getting into it the past couple of days because it's obviously huge and we were kind of in a build up that was more like a conclusion to what was happening in the last book. But we finally had the like reveal that set off what was going to be the rest of this book last night. What are we like a hundred almost 200 pages in um and it finally did that like reveal of where we're going from here and i lost my shit just just saying it was a big plot twist i'm really excited to see how this book develops so i'll keep you informed <laughs> so i'm a bit of a cheat um i'm only like almost 100 pages into the colder game but i'm really enjoying the setting which was the next question for the Thousand Dollars Reathon. So, I thought I'm technically going to finish the book. I pressed the button. So my final prompt is, where's God when you need him? And, which was Megan's prompt, another meme prompt. Um, and I picked for that, obviously, the Tyrant Baru Comorant. Um, Meg's idea was something sad. Yeah, these books are sad, but in the like rip your heart out kind of angry sad. And I, it's third in a series. I know I'm gonna enjoy it. I know it's gonna make me upset. So that's what I've picked for that final prompt. Um, so yeah, that's that's my end of Thousand Doors. I didn't finish it all in the week, obviously we're in vlog two. Um, so it would have it's ultimately have taken me two weeks for the readathon, but that's fine. I did enjoy being able to follow the prompts. It was a fun idea. I did really like it. So um, thank you for that team, Tamsin, Emma, and Meg, for making the readathon. It's been super fun. And I'll keep updating you over the course of this vlog how I go with those two final prompts, like books for the prompts, like what I end up ultimately thinking of them. What was I going to say? My video is currently uploading. Um, I'm about to have lunch. And then we're going to duck and dive into work. So I'll be listening to my audiobook. It's Friday morning. Last night I did finish the cold game. Finished it. I give it three stars. It's probably like a 3.5, almost a four, but I went with a three. Um, the writing for me is probably in this series is probably its biggest letdown, but it's really interesting. I'd be really interested to see, like I need to look them up 
because I need to put the effort in. But I'd really like to see some neurodivergent reviews because as a non like I'm if if I'm neurodivergent, I'm so vaguely neurodivergent to not even count. Um generally neurotypical person this all the characters in this read very neurodivergent to me um so i'd be interested to see your own like neurodivergent reviews and if they also pick up on the same things um a lot of the narration is a lot more about how the characters think in patterns and in yeah the different ways the characters think about their situations more than the plot um the plot was interesting it was a fun mystery this series is all mysteries um but in a less high action way it's a lot thinkier um there's puzzles and um yeah, interesting thought processes. I do really enjoy this series in like a, they're a different pace from a lot of the other middle grade I read. I am going to read the fourth one, which is the final one I'm pretty sure. It's called Pieces and Players. I don't own it. I'm going to have to go find it. Um, but yeah, I, I like this series a lot and I think I would really recommend them. But they are very odd and strange like they're a totally different reading experience to a lot of other middle grade mysteries i read and on that topic this morning i started the jeweled moth which is another middle grade mystery um this is a sinclair mystery by Catherine woodfine it's the second book in the series the first one's the cockroach sparrow which i read earlier in the year um so i'm yeah excited to get properly into this i'm like a chapter in um i'm gonna read another like 30 pages before i start work um yeah I we got jumped into some new characters who weren't in the first book. I'm interested to see how that plays out. I also finished what would have been Tuesday's section of the Tyrant Barry Comrade last night. Um I'm hoping I'm aiming to get about 200 pages into this today and then work on this and get as fast through as I can the beast. Um and then tomorrow, finish off Jeweled Moth and then just try and finish off The Beast. Because obviously it's Saturday tomorrow and I have, like, reading time. I got a lot to go. I'm here. I got all that to go. But, um, yeah, so I'm on page 276. Yeah, it's, it's going. It's doing things. I'm really interested to see where it's playing out. Um, this series is always kind of slow. Um, it's, it's like big moments, but you are kept in the dark. You don't see, like, it feels slow to me because you don't see, you can't see where the plot's trying to go. Cause it's all very slow maneuvering. It's not, I keep saying slow, but it's not. The individual scenes are really fast paced. There's a lot of action happening. It's all very brutal. The whole series has been really brutal, but how these individual moments play into the plot as a whole move slowly. So all these little things are happening and then as the story builds, you kind of see how they start to fold together. Um, and I'm sure you'll also see by the end of this one how this one falls together with the series as a whole as well. Um, and by the end, you're like, oh my God, or at least that was my experience with the first two books. Um, the first one especially, like I was not enjoying the first book for the first 70% and then as things started to fall into place at the end, I was like, but it put me in a reading slump because the middle was so slow. So then when I was reading the second one, I knew I wasn't going to get things resolved and falling into place to right near the end. So I read it faster because I was expecting that, which I wasn't when I read the first one. Um, and so I am with this one. So it's just a bit plodding, but also fascinating. It's that I just know as a reader, I need to, to get through a book quickly. I need to have a sense of I see where the plot's trying to go even if I don't know all the twists and turns I can see what we're trying to achieve like I can see the goal and what we're trying to get to if that makes sense um and this that gets revealed later that's like the twist is like figuring out how it all comes together so I need to just give it the faith like I'm giving it faith uh and I just need to keep plodding along with it so I'm gonna try and yeah I'm gonna read 200 pages of Jeweled Moth and then um, try and get 50, 100 pages through this. I've been reading about 50 a night, other than the first 
day where I read 100. But that was Sunday. Um, so every week I've been reading about 50. I'm going to try and do 100 tonight. Um, and then, then I'll have about 300 pages left to try and finish over the weekend. Um, but I also, over the weekend, after finishing this, would also like to read um, The Secrets of Windhouse by Ben Goodison. Um, just because I need to get through these middle grades. Um, and this seems like a fun one. It's got lots of pictures. Um, it's a sequel. Again, it's a mystery. I really enjoyed book one that I listened to on audiobook. Um, theoretically, I could also listen to this on audiobook and then I might be able to get it done that way. But I do kind of want to read it physically, read the puzzles. Um, so I might put it, uh, I'll see how I'm going, but I might put it on like three times speed and read along. But I probably don't need to. I can probably just read it with my eyes. It's a middle grade. It'll go fast. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I want to try and amp my reading up over the weekend. Yeah, I want to get all three of those finished over the weekend. Maybe start another middle grade. Um, which is the one after that would be Witchwood by Tahira Murphy. Um, yeah, I don't know if that'll actually happen, but that's our goals. Why do I never tell you about my goals? Anyway. <laughs> Why do I consistently fail at goals? <laughs> Ignore me. I um did finish today The Jewel Moth. Um I gave it four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. Um I didn't think it was quite as good as The Clockwork Sparrow, which was the first book in the series. Um, but mainly because I felt a little less high stakes at the end. I liked the introduction of new characters. Whereas well, like I'm kind of in focus, but I'm kind of not. There we go. Um, I liked the introduction of the new characters. I liked some of the new stuff going on plot wise. Um, and I'm interested to see how the things left standing develop in the next book. But overall, the mystery wasn't as good as in the first book, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I gave it four stars. It was a fun time. I really, really enjoyed it. I have since been working on. Tyrant Barracomera, but it's slow going. Um, I was hoping to also finish this today, but I've got like 250 pages left. Um, and I've been literally reading this all evening. Um, it's just dense and a lot of, like the font is small, there's a logical page and there's a lot of pages. Um, so I'm definitely gonna finish it tomorrow, I'm determined. Um, but I am, yeah. Didn't I? Yeah, I was determined to finish it today, but then I didn't get really into it till um, late this afternoon. By the time I finished Jeweled Moth, so because I <laughs> did I say this morning that I didn't get through as much of the Jeweled Moth last night as I'd intended? I was like, yeah, I'll get 200 pages in, and I barely got 100 pages in. So then I, yeah, I had more of the Jeweled Moth to read today than I'd anticipated, so I just couldn't get through as, as much of this as I'd wanted tonight, but we're going to finish it tomorrow. We're still going to try and read the other middle grade as well tomorrow. We're going to just do our best. Um, we probably won't achieve everything, but I'm determined to at least get this finished so, and maybe a good head start into the middle grade. Um, so we'll see how we go. I'll keep you updated. Did I do it? I did it. So. Last night, oh, yesterday, yesterday was Sunday. I, when I went to work Sunday afternoon, I still hadn't finished the Tyrant Borough Comrade, but I finished it late at night. <laughs> we did it. Um, but I was at work. Um, I gave, ended up giving this four stars. This is a very intense continuation to the series. It didn't have a bit of catharsis, but also left a lot of things open for the next book if that makes sense like the scale of this world just keeps me out and out and out um and you can see where it's going to go in the next book but this the first book kind of wraps up this book the second book didn't wrap up at all and then the third book this one kind of wraps up with some loose threads if that makes sense like there's loose threads but it does have some kind of conclusion um uh, yeah i ended up giving it a what is this a four stars um, I do think this series has a tendency to be a little draggy in the middle, but as I said earlier, it's kind of like 
before you know how all the threads come together they don't really make sense and then they come together and then it's really good like i really enjoyed the ending uh yeah so i give it four stars i recommend this series to specific people people who are really into high fantasy and are used to dense books because it is pretty dense um but i do really like them i also finished in the wee hours of the morning last night um Bronte Metal St uh, an extremely inconvenient adventure of Bronte Metal Stone. The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jack Moriarty. This is an Australian author. Um, I listened to this on audiobook, though I think I'm going to buy it in the sequel because it was so good. I gave it five stars. Um, it has a really interesting development. Essentially, we're following Bronte, who's never known her parents because they disappeared when she was young, going off on adventures. And then she gets a letter saying that they've died and they've left her this very detailed will. Um of how of things she has to do she has to go visit all of her aunts and deliver them specific gifts and it's kind of her adventures along the way so it kind of has like peaks and valleys throughout as like each step of the journey she has a a complete adventure and then overall arcs into one big adventure i loved it it is really long for middle grade it's like 500 and something pages but it was really good and i really enjoyed it i hope the second one stands up because I loved this. It was so fun, so good. Um, the audiobook especially was very sassy. And I really, really loved the narration. That's all I have for now. Um, next week, we're going into a new week. Um, this was for the final prompt for Thousand Doors Readathon, which was... Oh, what was the prompt? Where's God when you need him? <laughs> Which was something that was going to be sad. This was. That was sad. Um, and Streaming Adventures of Bronte Metal Stone just was a general middle grade for Believe Thumb, but didn't complete a prompt specifically. Um, going into this next week, I'm hoping to. I'm going to be reading all of Iron Heart by Nina Varela, which is the sequel to Cries War. And that's going to go for the mini battle for Clear Shit for an emotional roller coaster, which was the one that went for my Fatal Flaw, which was Buys Books Instead of Going to Therapy. Um, I'm also going to start Secrets of Winter House by Ben Goodison, which is, uh, I believe, the prompt. Um, but doesn't count for clear shit. I would also like to get to two more ones that are both for Believe It On and Clear Shit, which are Witchwood by Tara Murphy and Holly Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Grove by Jessica Townsend. Um, and the next audiobook I'm starting is Watch Hollow by Gregory Fanaro. That's also a minute grade, going for Believe It On. So, yeah, that's the plan for the next week. Keep an eye out for the vlog. Um, and so we're going to be following on through Clear Shit and Believe It On for the next week. So keep an eye out for that one. Otherwise, I'll see you soon in another video. Feel free to chat to me about any other things I've read this week down below or tell me what you've been reading this week. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!